What's going on, you wonderful people? Let's do this. Let's take it old school. YouTube! Ah! What's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon. Welcome back to Creighton TV. So, in today's quick tutorial video, it's going to be a beginner uh, startup guide, how to get everything set up working on Streamlabs OBS. So if you're new here and you like this type of video, subscribe if you're new. You can check out my last video, which I will link in the description down below. And at the end of this video, how I, how I set up everything with Streamlabs OBS using the H, uh, Elgato HD60S. In today's video, we're going to be using the Elgato HD60S Plus. Same same steps, it's just only thing is we're versus using the NDI source versus not using the NDI source. So in this video, there'll be no NDI source at all. So sit back, enjoy the video, and let's get to it. Sit back, hope you're ready for this video. Might be a long tutorial. I'm gonna go step by step on everything. Don't wanna take up too much of you guys' time. So, this is what you wanna do. When you boot up Streamlabs for the first time, if you have the Elgato HD60S Plus, it works also the same way if you have the uh, HD60S. It's just idea, you gotta use the NDI source and the OBS link. So right now, you're gonna open up Streamlabs OBS on your Mac, you feel me? Open up Streamlabs OBS when you first get, uh, after you download it and you went through the setup process of hey, running your computer and testing your encoder and everything else, you'll come to this screen. So when you get right here to this screen, you'll have your scenes, sources, and your mixer. This is all you're gonna need. So for your first scene, you wanna, you're gonna wanna add, you add a new scene, you can add a scene. So we can call that your you know, main scene. We'll just say main for right now. Game scene, we'll say main slash game. But you can name it whatever you you want, you know. Games, main slash game. We'll just leave it at that. You know, you got you got that. You want to add your, you know, be right back screen, stuff like that. So this is where you're gonna be adding all your scenes. We'll put brb. You no, know, you could put in screen in. So just add that. You know, so on and so on. There you go for adding that. So for your main scene right now, like the main game, talking to everything else. You want to come over to sources right here and you want to add the source. First thing you want to always add is your gameplay. So for me, this is using the Elgato HD 60 S plus. I'm going to add a video capture device. So I'm going to add, click on video capture device, click on add source, name it to whatever. But right now I'm just going to leave it as video capture device. You can name it to whatever you want, add source. You're gonna see devices drop down and it should pop up with your game capture HD60S, which is mine is right there. This preset you can leave at 1280 by 720 because we're gonna change that later. Hit done. Now you see, okay, like how do you stretch out your source to make it fit the whole screen itself? So, what you wanna do is come down to the game source, right click, which is on Mac. However, yours is set up, mine is set for two, uh, two finger tap, and mine pulls up for right click. But you want to right click, you want to go down to transform, fit to screen. Bam. So now it fits to that little screen. After you've done that, you want to lock it. There you go. You locked in, loaded, so that doesn't move. Now, every time that you add a new source for your main scene, like whatever you're going to add when you add a new source, make sure your gameplay is always at the bottom and everything that you add is above that so it overlays and it shows on top. So next, we're going to add a webcam. So you're gonna add another video capture device. Add source. You wanna click, come down here where it says add new source instead. And you can type this one and put webcam, add source, pick. And that's gonna ask you, you can pick, you know, your Mac computer, your name your, pick your webcam that you have plugged into your computer. Mine is the C9 Pro 20. There it is right there. Hit done. Now, since it's so big and you don't want it so huge, just, you know, rescale it, you know, place it wherever you like it, however you want fit. If you want to crop some size in, like if you want to crop it, like if it's too wide for you and you want to crop some sides in, what I do is you, uh, you hold alt, yeah, the alt key and you can click and drag and you can, uh, crop it in if you want to. So you just hold the alt key, which is the option key, hold that in. And the good thing for what Streamlabs is every time you add a source, it overlays your stuff onto the top. So there you go. See, there's my webcam. If I want to add 
let's get my audio in here because you still need that when you're using the Elgato HD60S Plus because your audio won't come in. So we'll add an audio input capture device at source, we'll leave it as audio input capture default. So we'll change that to the Elgato Game Capture HD60S so you can get your gameplay audio coming in. So there's one. Now you have to add your, if you're using an external microphone, you gotta add that too. So go back to add, add sources, audio input capture, another, add new source, you can put whatever your mic name is. Mine is HyperX. Find it in here, type on HyperX Quadcast so I can have my audio for that also with my game. Right now you don't see the game gear is coming because I haven't hit, um, X and I don't want to right now. So you can see I'm locking everything in place so they don't move. That's just just over there. There's a lot of stuff that's in sources that you want to do. When you be right back screen, you could put, you know, you could add pictures or media, something right there when you tell people to be right back and you know, you know, just little displays and everything else. So you have to play with it. Your end screen. So you just come in here. You can add widgets. We will add a widget to the main gameplay. So when you come over here to the widget section in Streamlabs OBS, this is the new version, version 1.0.1, version 1.0.2. Okay, we talk. All your widgets, you can add whatever, you know, whatever you like to use for your stream, set it up how you like and enjoy, follow or go. But me, I'm just gonna add the alert box where it gives you your donations, subscriptions, follows, bits, and hosts. Shows you everything right there. I'm just gonna add it base. We'll keep it the same name, alert box. So now it gives you a custom layout, how you can set all this stuff up. So you just have to go through to put on what do you want on and just toggle on what you like to use. But, you know, and then you can, you know, place this wherever you like it. If you want it right here, you don't want to take up the whole game screen. You could put it off to the corner. We're going to just set this like right here. Bam. So you notice, notice how it's creating there all this stuff and I'm, I'm locking them in place. But if you feel that your sources are getting too big and it's too much to handle, this icon right here lets you group sources together. So you click on there, call it a folder name. Like me, I will put my webcam and my audio capture and uh, Elgato HD and the game capture all in one. So I'll put game capture just so you know what it is, where it's at. Make sure you first drag game capture down and then drag these in, then lock it. And they all get to go. You get what I'm saying, you get the whole flow of that. Basically, this is, but you want to know, undo all that. There you go. You can undo all that. You know, put them all in there just so you can have multiple folders going through and everything else. Now, if you get over here to your mixer settings, there's a little gear icon that's over here in the right hand corner. It's called Open Advanced Audio Settings. Click on that because when you get here, your alert box is going to be, a, uh, all of it will probably be set to monitoring off like it is right here. What you want to do is alert box. You can leave that to monitor off or monitor only. Mute the output so you know it doesn't get too distracting in your streams. Your HyperX Quadcast. You want to make sure that's on monitor and output because you want to be able to monitor your voice and output to the stream. Your audio capture. You want to make sure that's on monitor and output. You don't need to have all these on my tracks on what everything else is. I usually just keep mine set to like that. Then you can ingest your volume from here if you want to if it's things that's too loud or you feel like like right now my mic feel like it's it's just right right now because where i'm sitting but if i get closer then you can see that you know it peaks into red and you don't want that so normally i just bring my mic down so i'm like negative five just so it's not too over the high of the game keep your gameplay over at 100 but the game delay is too high then you can bring that down so there you go. So that's like the getting started right there, just setting up everything what you need. But right now we're gonna go check over the settings. And then when you get to your settings inside of Streamlabs OBS, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure on general, we're gonna go through each one of these tabs that I say you should work on and fix. So in general, everything here should be set unless you're on your output, you wanna put automatic replay buffer, but you can go check out my last vi video on that, how to set up the replay buffer and everything else. We'll start off with stream there, you know, we can sign into your Twitch, YouTube. If you do Facebook, you know, you got Prime and everything else, your output. So this is what you want to do. When you first get here, your output is going to be on simple or would you want to change it to advanced? Advanced will get you all the stuff that you need. So streaming, we're going to go through all these categories one by one. So 
no long tutorial. Hope you're enjoying it right now. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new, if you haven't already. But right now, so audio track one, you want to leave that to there. Your encoder. So you're now, if you're encoder, if you have a dedicated graphics card in your system, you know, MacBook Pro, you know, iMac, and you're using, you know, the 15 inch, 16 inch, or the, you know, stuff like that, you should have hardware encoder. You got the dedicated processor if you bought one like that. If you didn't, oh, if you didn't, and you don't have a dedicated, do not use software encoder. That doesn't work. So you have to leave it on H.264. Um, like if you're using a MacBook Air or MacBook 13 inch, uh, software will work too. I'll show you on that. Your your rate control, you may want to make sure you check in for streaming service and encoder. Rate control, CBR, bit rate. Your bit rate all in consists of what your internet upload speed is. Say it with me. Internet upload speed is so where you check your internet upload speed is go to google type in internet upload speed run tests whatever your upload speed is if you have good standing internet then you are able to stream at a higher bit rate to get a better performance stream if you don't have good uh internet upload speed leave it at 2500 but if you do and you have good upload internet upload speed and you're able to push more than five megabytes per upload then you can push it up to about you know whatever is recommended but don't go higher than six thousand on twitch on youtube is uh up to six thousand also but for me like if i stream on twitch i can change my bit rate up to six thousand six thousand bit rate key interval put two just gives it a better number cpu usage leave it on very fast profile i usually put high or main either one tune you want to put zero latency and you'll be good to go from right then and there now if you have the encoder and you have like me hardware encoder and it looks like this yours will be a little different because you won't get all those extra settings so me i'll put six thousand key intervals two profile high and I'm done because there's nothing else that I can actually do. Now we'll go to recording. You're recording, you want to set your recording path. You can either use MP4 or MOV. That's what, uh, especially if you, it's easier if you want to edit in there. So MP4 or MOV, either one. Rescale output settings, you don't need that. Rate control, C CBR, constant bit rate. Me, I set mine to 18,000. Uh, you can always, you can push more when you're recording. Key intervals, you still want to do two. Very fast, high, zero latency tune, and everything else. My recording, I did set to uh, software, software X264. I tried hardware, but when I stream and I do the hardware, sometimes it does not work and it does not activate. So I don't know what's going on there, but just leave it on software, zero latency. And then your audio is what, you know, you got your everything else. You can leave all this stuff here, replay buffer. So now we're gonna come over here to audio. You can put it as default if you have one there. If not, you can. Disable it. it doesn't really matter what your mic audio so people can hear you you need you know set to your mic i set mine to there my next keys your oh right here sample rate yours will say 44 you can do 48 if you want to it doesn't really matter right there on that so stereo video okay this is the part where you want on video a lot of people said they couldn't do it so if you can't change yours just use custom well, you can put 920, 1920 by 1080 is what you want to. You know, you push that nice 1080 quality thing. So set that for both. You know, 16 or 32 samples, all depending on your machine and how powerful that your machine is. Me, I'm doing 32, common FPS, 60. Yes, the last one you want to go to is advanced. And when you get over here, the first one, the color format, it's the second one that says 709. You want to make sure that 709 gives you a better color range for what you're doing. 709 and 601. And then Force GPU has a render device. Scroll down and enable for network. Make sure it says uh, that's checked off. Dynamically change bit rate when dropping frames. That Which means that if you're starting to casually drop frames, it will automatically drop your bit rate until it uh, fixes out what is going on and then it'll bring it automatically back up which is good and you'll hit done and there you go you'll be ready to stream on streamlabs obs just as getting started now the same steps do apply for using the elgato hd 60s other thing is you're just using the ndi source and the obs link which is the same so when you come back to sources 
you'll hit that you'll hit sources and you'll should you should see ndi source if you have that downloaded you can go check out my last video or link in the description for that video and the ndi source if you're still using the hd60s and you're not using the plus so i do got i will have that video and the ndi source plugin link and the obs link down in the description that box below stop there whoa so other than that I hope you did enjoy this video. Like this video, subscribe if you're new. Catch me every Tuesday and Thursday for brand new videos posted at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Tuesdays and Thursdays will be my new videos every time I drop out. So if you guys did enjoy that video, like this video, subscribe if you're new, share this video around. And that being said, it's your boy Brandon coming to you from Crane TV. God bless everybody, and I'm signing out of here. Peace.